Hi there. I'm Patricia Doyle. We're here again for Artisans Alley at the Vernon Community Arts Centre. And today I have a very special guest. I brought AJ Hunter, a.k.a. Angelica Yeager, a.k.a. The Collage Gal, to show you some of what she does. Welcome here, AJ. Thank you very much, Pat. It's great to be here. I'm really thrilled. What are you going to show us today? I think I'm going to show you one of my most favorite mediums in, in all the different mediums I do in art is paper collages, which are beautiful for people who want to start in art, and it's a, it's a wonderful medium to work in. And you teach workshops in this with mixed media here at the Art Center too, right? I teach collage workshops like this that we're doing today, or I teach mixed media workshops, similar pieces like what you have in our, what we have in our background. I remember when we both had work at the Fugitive Gallery, downtown Vernon, and your collages, to me, were some of the most important pieces in that whole gallery. I always have such a soft spot in my heart for that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think you're outing us in age because that's a long time ago. <laughs> okay, forget it. We'll just erase that part. But uh, so what are you going to use to make your collage? So what we start with is just a piece of uh, uh, framing paper, which is a, a mat board. Mat board. Okay. Um, and I like to work in the square format. I just find that that's how they work the best. They're the most powerful. And I've tried different formats, but I have always come back to this one. And then we're using papers that I have collected from halfway around the world, and some of them that I have stained myself with just regular um, uh, tissue paper, not, not even a specific tissue paper, just white. Okay. Please don't use any of the pre-colored tissue papers because they bleed like crazy and they sort of like Do they? destroy the whole the whole piece. So okay. These are these are stained with liquid acrylics, and I um, use the best possible quality that I can find. Yeah, you do. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, shall we start? Yes, please. All right. How I usually start is when I teach. I I tell my students it's sort of a little bit like going on a trip. So I put everything out that I possibly uh, would want to take on a trip. And then when it comes to packing my bags, particularly when you only travel, carry on, you have to shrink things down. So what I usually do is I lay out the colors and the different textures and fabrics that I might want to have. Obviously, I have done a little bit of pre-selecting um, here. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I get to the place to say, you know what, I don't want too much of it. I don't want it too busy. I usually try to scale it down to, to the same color group. As well, I am scaling it down to not more than three textures. So that would be the first thing. I would definitely, and this is what it's plenty to have, plenty of room. I would definitely use some of those. This is probably not. It's nice to stay in that side of the color wheel, like any sort of three For sure. colors in the family. Yeah, yeah, either that or you go with complementary colors. And I have yeah. some example I can show a little later. Oh, good. That uh, just do complementary colors, so we go with that. But okay. it seems to be very appropriate. It's uh, anti-bullying day today. Pink and purples are all coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. Came to my mind when I put this together for the okay. show. Okay. So that's about where I would be. And then I have little extra pieces that I put into wonderful meat trays. Um, because I'm a recycler and a reuser, so everything gets reused in a certain way. They get a new purpose. They are repurposed, actually. Um, and then I start, and I say, okay, so what do I want to do? Now, the next step would be for me to decide. Could you please hand me the water? Indeed. Thank you. No, I need the, the other water, please. Thank you. Perfect. I, I need to decide sort of on the sizes that I want to use. And this is a little trick too where you can make organic shapes, which I always like to have, mm -hmm. and then put them down. Sort of get the idea of what I want to do. They will still hang over a little bit. And I lay it out so that we have a little bit of a composition and a little bit what we're always interested in, obviously, is to make sure that we have different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. And um, as a good friend of mine taught me many years ago, she said, always think about different shapes, sort of like the family, like the papa, mama, lots of little kids. 
Whichever, whichever size in order doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's just, I just really like the, the um, metaphor that she was using. Yeah, that works. And I thought that works for me. And composition is such an important element in this. It certainly is, no doubt about it. I might go back to take some of this lighter purple in here to make, to maybe even put it underneath here so that this isn't so white, yeah. white underneath. I'll put some more of the pink in here. And as you can see, I'm very, very careful with the paper to not wrinkle it and not to do anything. <laughs> I notice you're handling, handling it very gently. Yeah, it's, um, I'm a texture person. I love texture and I always like to get texture involved in things. So I'm really not concerned about any wrinkles and any, it adds to any, it. any extra folds. It Just like us, to right? It. You get to be a certain age, you don't mind the wrinkles in the folds no. so much. Absolutely, just like us, you're right <laughs> on that one, for sure. So what I like in this one is too, is that it is a little starker in, in part of it, so it gives a bit of a direction as well. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of where I wanna go with this. I might wanna add a little bit of the other paper, which is a bald paper, and again, I'm very, very careful to not, <laughs> to not really do too much of this. So this is sort of the idea I have. And then I go and get my favorite L shapes and just get an idea if what I've laid out there is actually what I want to do. Does that go with what I said in terms of composition? Do I have different shapes? Do I have hard edges? Do I have soft edges? Is it overlaying? Is it a little too strong? Is this maybe too strong? Do I need another piece of this? And the framing corners are a really good tool to help you decide. You can isolate pieces of an artwork and decide That's right. that the whole thing should be spread out or That's right. whatever. That's right. And if you work on paper, they are great because you can always do a whole piece. And then you just do what we call the cropping. And it, you can do a lot of like really beautiful pieces that mm -hmm. sort of come out of there. So that's sort of, in a fairly fast way, what I would probably go with. Maybe, maybe you want to add a little more of that because I find this little really dark, really light here. Yeah. So now the tricky part comes because now, it gets trickier. No, it gets <laughs> trickier because the tricky part is. So how do I glue this down so it actually comes down or how I want it? Yes. How do you do that? I'm gonna show you. Okay. I need to make a little more room here. So what I do is I go from, and I guarantee you, usually what I do too is sometimes I take a picture so that I can go back and, and see if I really did it the way. Yes. Oftentimes they come out different, but what I do is I take the top part and then how they are laid out, I put them to the side. Okay. And add them like that. I do the photo too for the reconstruct because sometimes pieces with a lot of tiny pieces, yeah. it's nearly impossible to it recreate is. it I after agree. you destroy it. I agree, I agree. So obviously we were maybe a little fast on that one, but <laughs> I think we will go back to it in terms of the bigger shapes and the smaller shapes to interject and, and to have um, a different tension going with organic edges and with sharp edges. Okay. Now the fun starts, because now, yes, we might need those later, now we are adding mad medium. Okay. Oh, this is sort of, we're adding mad medium to it, and what we do is we add the mad medium and start gluing things down. And matte rather than satin or shiny white? Right. Because this, um, the matte medium actually only acts like a glue. Okay. So, and I don't really want it shiny because if I want something shiny, I can always get shinier paper or make mm -hmm. shinier paper. Which actually brings me to a good point because when you look at this paper, it is shiny on the one side and it is, there is a shiny side. Mm -hmm. And it is matte on the other side. Which is because the acrylic paint seeps through the tissue, mm -hmm. and the side that is, you have it laying on a, on a plastic, uh, when you pull it off, it comes off shiny. Okay. Which I really like, and it plays, it plays a little bit of a role when you do those, because now I can add this shiny side, as you see, on here, 
and come. Does it stay shiny if you put matte medium no. over it? No, if I put matte medium over it, it won't stay okay. shiny. But I don't have to put matte medium over everything because I don't need to really okay. put matte medium there. So here is the trick. Isn't there always a trick? Mad medium underneath. Now you have to roll out the glue, the mad medium. Mm -hmm. And very important to roll it out to one side only. Don't go like that because you just push it from here to here, but it's not coming out of oh, the piece. Okay. So you want to make sure that you roll it so it is all out of there. And then it Lovely. Just, lots of people who talk about that you need to have three of this and five of this and seven of this. I think it comes from the floral world. Um, yeah. When you buy flowers, oftentimes they tell you that you should have three of this and that. Like the odd numbers in botanicals. Yeah, sort yeah. of that. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't always go with that, but I think there is probably, um, there's probably a moment that I need to consider that as well. Um, it's interesting, I went to a workshop many years ago with a friend and she said, if any of these instructors, instructors will ever tell me that they never think about anything what they do, I'm not gonna believe them. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, really? I oftentimes just go and do things and really don't think about it and then I get myself in trouble. Because well, but sometimes your eye tells you that it's, that it's not right. That's right. And you, then you have to go back to the rules and try and figure out which rule you broke That's that right. is bothering and, you. And as I said, oftentimes in my workshops, I, um, I get myself in trouble because I sort of have done an error into some area. And then yeah. that just yeah. is a challenge. And I find it is actually quite lovely because that means that the students see that only because you have done it for so many years doesn't mean that you couldn't be doing yeah. mistakes as well, right? Yeah. So. All right, I think that's how far we will get with this right now. Okay. It's, uh, I'm liking it so far. Yeah, what we'll do now is we'll get our trusty frame out again. And see if we still like it. Not sure how much the camera can see this, but. I sort of like this. So going back to we have a bigger shape, we have a second big shape, and then we have a fair amount of small shapes. Mm -hmm. We have some of the textures that are only twice. Most of them are only twice. But that's not the end of it. That's just the very first step that we're doing. So now we have a piece that has a lot of extra edges. It really doesn't look like a square anymore, does it? <laughs> not sort even of, maybe. Sort of not even maybe. OK. Because I'm a frugal person, I would need another brush that I thought I had somewhere. That's not why I'm a frugal person. I think I have one. Here you go. Oh, wrong brush. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay. Because I'm a frugal person, I'll sort of I'll take those edges and try to get a control rip of these so that I can use the little bits and pieces of paper either in the same collage or in another one later on. Mm -hmm. And we keep those in the trusty meat trays. Could be vegetable tray, too. Could be. Or a bakery tray. Oh, oh that sounds like cookies. <laughs> Sweet. So what are we doing now with our edges? Here's a little trick. We need more mad medium. Same with the mad medium is it just, it's glue, and it just sort of glues together, so mm -hmm. it's all... Big plastic glue. Plastic, and so it's not really coming out the way I might want it sometimes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So what we do now, we are putting mad medium on the back and then fold it over. And look at the nice clean edge we're getting. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't end up with any white edges at the corners that's that way right. either. That's right. Nice. That's right. I agree. And you've got some great names for your pieces, hey? I do have some great names. Yeah, I have. Um, I have a dear friend who has very long titles for her pieces, and I always love to to read them. And um, they are always obviously some very um, interesting 
stories with them. Mm -hmm. I think we all have stories with it, right? Yeah. So I mean, the textures are really coming through on this. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you will notice is that it buckles right mm -hmm. now. That is because it is wet on this side. Yeah. And I forgot to say that earlier, but I had put mad medium on the back side. So it will all straighten out. Without weights? With, uh, no. Best thing is once we are done to wrap it into some towels and put a couple of heavy books on there. And then they come out very okay. straight. I might want to show you how they look when they are halfway through. And look at how nice and straight this oh, is. Oh, boy. So yeah. having the matte medium on the back and the front is what it makes it equalized? Definitely makes a difference. Okay. Yeah, definitely makes a difference for sure. Mm. So this is how far we got. And you can see that you never have enough room. And it doesn't matter how many tables <laughs> you have. So I quite like those colors. I quite like what's I do happening too. there, too. <laughs> OK, so AJ, now we're on to the next step of your collage. What are you going to do now? So now I like to incorporate what I call transfers, which are uh, images out of a mag photocopied out of a magazine or even your own drawing, mm -hmm. and transfer it onto tissue paper, like okay. something like that. And they will be become part of that. They will be um, uh, incorporated into the collage. Mm -hmm. And I totally go by just my gut feeling on this. There's not a rule for what to do and where to do. It's a strong image. So if the piece itself were too large, it could overpower That's the, the exactly piece. That's exactly right. Plus, it is really not in the color theme that we have been working in. So mm -hmm. we need to incorporate it so that um, it actually is seen, which means uh, when you do those, you want to go onto something that's fairly light in the background. Mm -hmm. So, and I think with even having this partly on the stronger pink here, it well, it actually distorts the image a bit, which then will make the viewer try to find out what really he's looking at. So I'm always, I always Question like Question the image. I, I always like to have my audience sort of be curious and come close up to the pieces and- You're uh, good at that. Oh, yeah. thank you. Good. That's because I think, I don't want to give the whole story away. I think there should be room for everybody to create their own story. And interpret it their own and way. In, interpret it their own way, mm -hmm. yeah. So this lady, I think I'll leave her as a whole. And these are strategically placed, even though I haven't talked about it, but I think intuitively I just place them strategically, not right in the center of it, because it's a little bit like driving a car. After a while, you know what to not do mm -hmm. or what to do at what there's time. There's the golden triangle, and there's the grids of three, and placement so that you bring the viewer into the painting and don't shoot them back out the other side. That's right. So that That's definitely exact, works, what you're doing exactly, there. Yeah. I like this paper, similar texture to this, but purple. That's right. Yeah, that's why you like it too, right? <laughs> <laughs> However, I, um, I like that one as well to just sort of like play a little bit that I don't have to have a suit piece of the same color, but because the, the pattern is the same, it will already automatically um, repeat the design. Repeat, repeat the design nice. and, and remind. And I didn't do this right, so let's go and do another piece here. So this is better. Yeah, that's when I found this in my treasury box there. I thought this would be a nice addition to it. So what else would I incorporate? Well, there is um, obviously a lot of things. I think, as I have been known, and you can see, um, I've been known for doing hearts, creating hearts. In once all, or twice? Once or twice <laughs> in all <laughs> shapes and sizes. Hearts even. are a big part of your work for the last 10 years or so, hey? They have always. Actually, hearts have always been a big part of my life. I've been collecting hearts in all shapes and materials since 40 years, much to my husband's dismay because I just play <laughs> them at home. <laughs> But I think he secretly is liking it. It's just sometimes he wants to. You also did a fabulous installation at the Kelowna International Airport in the departure area that was called Wanderlust, I think, wasn't That's it? That's correct. Very moving piece. Correct. Uh, five very large, seven, seven very seven. large hearts in all different mediums. Right. And different um, 
softnesses and different sturdiness and different fragility. That's correct. I did, this was in November 2016. I got a chance to create pieces for a six months um, exhibit at the departure lounge at the Kelowna International Airport. And I created seven hearts that were about four feet by four feet and they all had a long tail that sort of like they ran into each other. And um, those hearts are still alive and I'm, I'm working on getting them out in the open again because right now they live in my studio and as much as I personally like them, I would like to share them with the world. So I think they were- It was a really powerful piece, I thought. I, I was on my way somewhere else and uh, insisted that we stop and have my picture taken with it because it ah. was really, I think I emailed it to you. Right. I mean, I, I'm a very intuitive artist, so I very much go with what my gut tells me, not necessarily what um, is maybe the fashion or today we're doing something that's sort of like according to the day maybe if you so want. Mm -hmm. But um, I always sort of um, felt that I was able to pull something that already had a meaning and bring it back and give it a, a new life and a new purpose and mm -hmm. I've really always enjoyed that. So this piece, I need to glue down with something heavier than the mad medium because it is a pretty heavy piece. Um, and this is gel? And this is soft gel. In this case, it's glossy. It doesn't really matter, but there is um, gels come in, in different thickness. They come as a regular gel, which is fairly, fairly hard and strong. The soft gel is a little more like margarine. And then the next one would be the medium like in, in terms of the liquidity okay. going through there. So um, somehow I feel that there is an element missing. And somewhere, as I said, I think I'll, I'll now here is my, here could be my conundrum. If I put this right there, it's pretty much center, right? Close. And it's still pretty, in the lower third, though. Right, but it's pretty much centered this way. So, but I do want it to be, readable for people, but it's a little bit. Do you ever put them sideways? Or do you always have them? No, I've never done them sideways, actually. That would be cool. Huh. It's a good idea. We might, we might try that. So let's see if I have the right pen. That, might, that was a bit of my issue to try to find the right pen to do this. I might have to um, improvise a little bit here. That's your middle name, isn't it? It's sort of, yeah, I think so. So um, this is just, a, I think this is a, uh, one of the words that I found in Michael's or something like that a while ago. And sometimes I just like to outline a little bit, but not too much. So just- That's a great uh, idea, um, the metallic pen? Yeah, it's a metallic pen and just sort of like to keep people guessing. I think I always wanted to sort of- Yeah, if it's too easy, it's kind of not challenging. If they have to think about it a little yeah. bit, and there's some, uh, it could be a chance that's a different word. I think if it's too easy, it um, it gets boring for people. They lose interest. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think sometimes when I do drawings, I I don't draw all of it. I think this is a, this is intriguing to me. Yeah, you might want to show that. This is very intriguing to me. I might go in with a, with a thinner pen at some point later and finish some of the lines in there. Okay, but, but again, would you stick with silver? Or would you use like a black highlighter? No, I would probably stick with silver yeah. because I somehow I like the it. silver sort of like works for me on this one. Right Especially now. with the cool colors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So another thing that I like to do is um, give the eye a bit of a guidance of where I want you to go. So one of the things could be a silver lining. I could just take the silver pen and just draw this. Mm -hmm. Or another one would be to uh, incorporate wire, or in this case, maybe just silver, silver cord. Silver cord, silver yarn, I guess, almost. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as you can give your eye a bit of a channel to follow. Right, that's exactly it. Nice. Where I think so this way, I think it would be obviously we because in the Western world we start reading from the left top, so that sort of like and the other thing it does too, even if I would have an angle here to take me out, it would bring me it's back. It's still bringing into you back it. into that's the picture, right, which is sure. 
for sure. Where you want to be. Yep, definitely do want to be that, no doubt. So is that lightweight enough that you can use this to yes. adhere it, or do you have um, to use the gel? I would probably use the gel on that one, and it is a bit tricky to probably do it in the time frame we have because this does need, um, because I would only do it in certain places. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it all and everywhere. Because these are paper, they need to be framed behind glass, as you can see with some of the pieces I have here behind me, that um, that we would make sure that they are covered from dust and... And, and getting bumped. And too. getting bumped yeah. as well, yeah. So um, that's why it's okay if they are not totally flat on the surface, if they don't stay totally flat. I think that's, you know... I like that. That really adds a visual interest. Yeah, I think so. So this is probably the place where I would say, you know what, AJ, you had fun so far, but maybe you don't want to go overboard, which we sometimes have a tendency to do. Just a little. Uh, just a little. So Knowing when to stop is a big part of making art. It is, art. certainly is, that's for sure. I think one thing I would maybe want to add right now as well is, because I decided against those, I find they are too drastic. Um, I have this wonderful book that some friends of mine put together for me. Um, and it's certainly not for somebody who really collects stamps. They would be, terror <laughs> they would be terrified. But those are color-coordinated stamps. And I just love oh, them because goodness. I can go in and say, oh, this is the color palette. And then in this case, I probably would look for something that would have to do with maybe the theme that we have been trying to, to do. So, um, What a great gift. Yeah, it was a great gift. I think, the, oh, this is perfect. Look at this, we have another, another female, and Canadian too. The queen, we could call it the queen. So that, that's one of the things I would do. But as I said, I probably at this place would just maybe look for those things, put them in my little bowl and say, I'll go back to them when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. But I might not want to do this right, right away and right now. Um, but I would just have those options at least to do. That's very fun. Yeah, this is a beautiful book, so that's for sure. So maybe we want to stop at this one, and I'll show you one that is in the same realm and sort of the same sure. colors, and sure. that, is, just, that is a bit... We'd love to see it. Well, that is almost ready, I would say. So this would be... One, again, it has a little bit to do with women, but it had to do with the lessons we have to learn in life and, and that we do want to have fun while we are doing it. So this very is- Very much a mixed this media is piece. A, this, yeah, very much. So this is actually has a bit more 3D as well. Um, this is just one of my working mats that I stick them in so that I can have that sort of finished look and mm -hmm. we can do the same with this and see where this will go. There you go. It frames it nicely. I would say we are 90% where we want to be for this. And then, as I said, I feel like this, my pieces need to live with me for a while and then they come and say, and now you are out to finish me. That's lovely. I can't thank you enough for coming well, to Artisan's Alley today. Well, thank you for having me. Thank uh, you. AJ teaches fabulous mixed media classes here at the Art Center. And if you have an opportunity to take one, I would highly recommend it. She's a wonderful person and a really gifted teacher. This is Patricia Doyle signing off for Artisan's Alley. Thanks for watching.